What's up, everybody? So, to wash my hair, do a lot of number of things, and uh, send some training. I attended a recap with AWS on generative AI. I was just out there in Vegas uh, a few weeks ago. So it was nice to see that the conversation is still continuing. And then I attended a um, webinar with the Maryland Black Chamber of Commerce. And that's really good. You know, the thing about cybersecurity, even though I'm studying it and I'm living proof and breathing it every day, it's nice to hear from people that are also doing this work in many different sectors. So looking at cybersecurity, how it affects the banking industry, how it affects government agencies, law enforcement, uh, obviously tech companies, small businesses, and um, everyday citizens. I'm very happy. I'm also very tired <laughs> because um, I just took on a new certificate, business intelligence. So a lot of times, um, if you want to do the research, you can get scholarships to go to school and scholarships to get certifications. Not only will that help you in your career, but also your education. You know, you I want to be the best lawyer possible. And so I'm bringing a lot of different skills to the table in terms of technology, in terms of the business sector, in terms of a number of things. And I'm happy about that because that technology is a equalizer in terms of what you are able to do. I have been working for myself for many, many, many years. I started even, you know, as a young person, my very first computer was a Macintosh. Anybody remember number munchers? <laughs> that black and green screen. And I was just always interested in technology and what it can do for you. So someone such as myself, I'm able to work from home. I'm able to work from anywhere. I don't even need a laptop. I can work off of a mobile phone knowing um, the different things that you need. And so I remember when we had this emergence of apps and things like that. So that's why I'm gonna get back into web development and coding. You know, there's a number of uh, glitches I always find with websites, with apps, um, even with customer service. My goodness, you're talking to so many robots and they can't understand you, clearly, because of the programming. And so being able to utilize the benefits of predictive programming, like with chat bots, uh, chat GPT, a number of things, and how um, generative AI and a lot of these things uh, impact the legal field. I would not recommend just getting your research from generative AI because it, to me, is not comprehensive. And you have to be able to fact check your sources. And so that's what we see in a number of things that um, AI is artificial, artificial intelligence. So you will always need people who are intelligent to manage these things. So I'm a firm believer. I don't think that AI should replace people's jobs. It should complement what you do. It shouldn't be used as a shortcut. It should be used as a way to increase productivity for sure. You know, um, I'm still building my website. It's funny because I built it and then the company that I went with, I don't know what happened, but they lost the entire file. So I have to find the cache version. But I was able to use AI within four hours to put together my whole website, everything, pictures, the theme, the font. So we've come a long way from the days of Wix and, um, you know, blogs and things like that. And even looking at a lot of the videos, you know, really, I'm going to get back into film editing, video editing, a number of things, uh, not just to make money, but to also simplify my life to further my education and also to effectively manage multiple households <laughs> in multiple jobs, multiple everything. So I have a long list of all these events and I know people have been asking, why do you say you're gonna come and you don't come? It's not that I don't wanna come. A lot of times I'm doing so many other different things. I have to try to prioritize what's important. So if you ever find that you're not gonna be able to attend someone's function or webinar or whatever, it's always a nice idea to send them a note. Apologize I couldn't make it to your event. Hope it was great. 
Um, a lot of times people just send me the information because they understand that I'm not able to be in more than one, one place at the same time. Collaborating, you know, networking, anywhere that I have internet, you know, I can work. And that is the beauty of being able to utilize the internet um, to your advantage, you know. And I mean, you think about it, technology, being able to put that in someone's hands, you'd be amazed what they can do. Um, when it comes to school, I was going to school online years and years and years ago. Uh, the hybrid approach, though, is what I prefer. I prefer a mix of in-person as well as being able to study when I want. So, yeah, I can go to the beach and I can still focus on my work. Or um, a lot of times with traveling, I utilize that time to get caught up on everything. So when I'm sitting at the airport or I'm on Amtrak or a number of things, they have Wi-Fi. They have outlets, they have resources, you know, so I can still get some work done. So when I get to my hotel or I get to the conference, I already have a clear agenda of what I need to do, who I need to talk to, what I need to address. So I'm doing a lot of advocacy. I'm getting on the bus. I'm going to a lot of different jurisdictions, which I used to do, and it's super fun. And this is also something uh, that I share with my daughters about the importance of advocacy and networking, um, presentation, how to have an issue, how to have a platform, and you know, how to represent that and how to work with people. Because a lot of times you're gonna come across opposing opinions, right? And so how to remain civil when someone has an opinion that's different than yours, you know? And how to do your research, but also how to keep an open mind. Critical thinking is a very important tool that we still need to have, even though you can easily pull things off the internet. You wanna fact check it. You also, you know, Work, having worked in a lot of law firms, you still want to know how to do book-based research. You still should know how to go to the law library or if you're in medical school, to go to the medical library and be able to pull things up and research. And so that's why I'm still very old school with watching the news, with reading newspapers, even though I don't have it physically. And I miss that. There's nothing better than opening up that newspaper and reading the different sections, you know. Uh, being able to get research from a number of places. So I'm really impressed with a lot of these content creators because, man, you guys are doing some really extensive research. Uh, kind of like investigative journalism. And that's something that uh, I used to study as well. I remember the museum when it was in Virginia. It was in D.C., kept changing. But I remember uh, they had this segment where you could do the news. And I was hooked in a good way, right? When I mean hooked, I mean I saw an opportunity to where you can be in that chair moderating the discussion. You can be asking those hard-hitting questions. And so that's how I learned how to go to events for free, how to sit in the front row, even without press credentials. Don't need them. And how to ask questions. They also have a Q&A. So sometimes I try to get the question in uh, beforehand. And I think about what I want to say. There's nothing worse than hearing uh, questions that just seem so staged, you know, where um, the person that's answering already knows the answer. One thing I'll tell you, I've learned working with a lot of lawyers. A lawyer never asks you a question they do not already know the answer to. Keep that in mind. And um, also, you know, the lawyer, like a lot of people, are supported by people because no one person can get it all done. This is just impossible. So that's why attention to detail is important. Knowing where to get the most relevant and updated information, but also connecting, like they call boots on the ground, connecting with the actual experts in the industry, the people that you don't see on TV, the people who are writing research papers, writing thesis, writing dissertations, doing a number of things, you know? And I like the fact that a lot of things that I do is remotely, is sometimes is keeping in mind the time zone and then, you know, the day of the week as well, because <laughs> <laughs> Even it's like I have literally logged off for a Zoom meeting, it's tomorrow, you know, or something like that. 
things happen. It's not the end of the world. I've even shown up to things. I'm like, this is, I put this on the calendar wrong or, you know, glitches. So what I'm trying to do is look at how to make scheduling things much more easier. Having all these different platforms and the different techniques and the different benefits that they have. So that's why it behooves you do your research. Do your research. Get you want to get that money? Get that free money. Get that free money to study, uh, to learn, or get with a company. I was in uh, a store the other day, and I always talk to people. I always tell them, make sure you talk to HR about whatever benefits that your company offers. I don't care what you do. You could be a trash man. Does that company offer a certification? Do, do they offer any training? I'm sure that they do. And think of it as your uh, leg up, your next step up the ladder, you know. And so when you want to get promoted, when you want to go for a high paying job, have the credentials. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars like we always were told that we have to do. There's a number of platforms. And so I value the time of the people who put these events and conferences together, which is why I reach out to them. And even, and you also build your database of networking. Believe it or not, you may want to talk with some respect to the people at the front desk, to the people that answer the phone, especially if you need something done. And if you need them um, to do you a favor, to expedite something, you know, uh, and also, if you can make things a little bit more easier for people, it's a little bit easier for them to work with you. So before I meet with someone, I want to know what the issue is. I want to know the background. I want to know, um, is this a one-time incident? Especially when it comes to cybersecurity. Because a lot of times, when you detect one thing, you detect a lot of things. And I worked in the IT field. I was a help desk technician, an IT analyst, a number of things. And what you find is that sometimes the information is not given to the appropriate people to take action. You'd be surprised how many companies I would call on the phone or email them to let them know of something coming down the pipeline. And they would just ignore me. Oh, no, we have IT people. We got it. And then uh, they have cyber breach or they have an internal uh, theft ring, or a number of things, or a glitch. Yeah, a glitch. And so um, that's why I pay attention to banking. And I, again, I tell people, use precaution when using a lot of different apps with using um, a lot of these fintech companies. It was very frustrating to me today, having to call one company, and you can't even get a person on the phone. So while a lot of companies may feel that they can just automate everything, you still need people to operate these systems. You still need people who understand how they work. And you're going to still need people to assist people. You know, I help develop um, different Q&As and databases, query databases, but also help desk databases. And so you think about the most commonly asked uh, questions that people have. And nowadays with being able to work remotely where a technician can access and you can share your screen, they're able to quickly diagnose a problem. But part of the issue is though, I feel that there needs to be more cybersecurity training with entry level workers. I don't feel that cybersecurity should just be relegated to the higher ups. Frontline workers should know, especially when it comes to theft. When it comes to ATM skimming, um, when it comes to POS skimming, a number of different things. And you're always going to need technicians. You're always going to need people to do these things, you know. And so it's going to be a great day. I drank my coffee. I'm about to get ready to run out. got a number of things to do before I hit the road. But technology harnessed the right way can do a lot of good for society. It's when we have bad actors who manipulate things and you know that has a negative effect on society. So when you see a data breach, it's not just that the company was compromised. That's people's personal information, which then translates to a number of other areas. So 
just because you hear the word cybersecurity, um, it's definitely something that you should still pay attention to. And you can go to the library for free and learn about these things, or you can just Google cybersecurity, free uh, trainings, free workshops, uh, scholarships. I'll get ready to end. But I'll tell you that I first started thinking about this a few years ago when I applied for a cybersecurity apprenticeship. So there are a lot of apprenticeships and internships that will pay you to learn. They will, you know, so you don't have to feel like you have to have all the skills up front. Look at what the program is seeking to make your application stand out and look at what you can learn on your own for free. So I got some uh, AWS scholarships. You know, so I'm very, very appreciative of companies that offer learning programs and training programs and things like that. So in your spare time, you can further your career. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times you will hear some advice online from people who do not know what they're talking about. That's why I read the comments. I come for the comments. And I like to hear what people are saying about the information. Like I heard someone telling people on YouTube, you should, if you're not making X, Y, Z, you need to change your job every few years. Someone that constantly changes their job, that might be a red flag. What's the problem? Are you not good at what you do? <laughs> Are you not, uh, you know, getting a favorable report or report? With, why are you changing jobs so much? Now, it's one thing, every job that I've changed has been a step in the right direction. Even if it meant I took less money, I looked at the benefits. So when you look at a work opportunity, an internship, whatever the case may be, look at the overall benefits. I interned a lot of places for free, but... I got academic credit, I got networking, I got exposure and experience that I would have not gotten any other place else. So I didn't really work for free because then that also boosts my portfolio and my ability to show that I know how things work. I know who are the key players and what's at stake and also how to work with your chief of staff, how to work with your CEO, how to work with a number of different people because people come from different walks of life and how to know the terminology. There's nothing worse like uh, in DC, it's alphabet city for real. Everyone has acronyms and outside of DC, people may not know, you know, and so how to be able to explain relatively complex terms in a lay person's uh, perspective. You know, you definitely want to still have the science intact and the things that are important, but how to communicate that to someone that doesn't work in the medical field, that doesn't work in the legal field, technology field, uh, things of that nature. So having personality is not a bad thing. Smiling, being happy, you know. Uh, that's kind of how I stand out in a lot of these quote-unquote male-dominated uh, areas. 